Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Glad you could attend. Come inside today as we take a look at the sequel to the film that was spun off a three-minute trailer. Yes, that's right. We're looking at Machete Kills. Yes, Machete Kills. Now, this time around, Robert Rodriguez, who directed this, brings us a story of Machete being asked by the President of the United States to go uh, into Mexico and stop a madman from launching a missile onto Washington, D.C. and escaping into space. That's the story. It's pretty basic, okay? Uh, <laughs> now, uh, what I enjoyed about this first off was Danny Trejo, seeing him on the big screen. He does a lot of small screen direct video projects, so getting to see Danny Trejo on the big screen in a role that was just specifically written for him is always fun. Danny was great in this. He really loves this role. He's into this role. I, I, I love the Machete character and I'll watch him in almost anything he's in. So Danny Trejo definitely it was uh, fun to see back on the big screen in this role. Another character that I really enjoyed that was new to the f uh, franchise, I guess you can call it now, uh, was the Chameleon character. Now this gave them an opportunity to put in a number of uh, interesting cameos, but it worked for the character. I They really thought out this chameleon character and I really enjoyed it. I mean, because of him is the reason why you get uh, like Cuba Gooding Jr. in here and Lady Gaga, both who actually do very well for the short uh, times they're on screen. So I give them props with the chameleon character. Really enjoyed that character and loved what they did with it. Uh, definitely an interesting over-the-top, tongue-in-cheek poke at those spy uh, films where you've got, uh, you know, some someone uh, changing their identity constantly. And in fact, that's what Machete Kills really is. Whereas before, it felt more of the send up to the exploitation sleazy type of film. This one definitely had more of a, dare I say, Austin Powers type feel to it. A definitely a, a, a parody of spy films. Basically, Machete as your uh, Latino badass uh, equivalent to James Bond in these outrageous situations. And I enjoyed the film uh, all right just not maybe quite as much as the original. I think there were a little more hills and valleys for me in this one uh, for the humor and, and what came at you. And, and one of the weaker points, I think, for this film was the was Charlie Sheen or Carlos Estevez as the president. Uh, I, every time I saw him, I just kept flashing back to Hot Shots Part Du, which wasn't a bad parody film either, but I think I don't, I don't think I was expecting uh, as much of a spy parody as we got from this, uh, from Machete Kills. I still enjoyed it quite a bit. There's some outrageous kills, some fantastic one-liners, and uh, characters that just pop up that surprise you. One of the surprise characters was Mel Gibson. I really enjoyed his character Vaz in this. When, when he shows up, the film really takes a different turn, but it was a turn for the better. I really liked the feel of it, uh, especially when his character shows up. And, and it, it Definitely, though, this is, if you had saw the end credits to Machete, you know there were two more films that they were planning on, and so this is going to be a trilogy, and it is going to be a trilogy, even if you look it up. Uh, there's a Machete Kills in Space, okay? And, and this one almost feels a little bit like middle film set up for the next film, okay? So I guess maybe that's why I felt it was just a little bit weaker. Uh, still some great performances. Great to see Michelle Rodriguez back, Tom Savini. Always great to see Tom Savini back, uh, although his character has taken a little bit of different uh, change of tone than in the first one. I really liked seeing him. And, and in general, it was a fun movie. I did, I was entertained, and it is batshit crazy, just as you would expect from the trailers and from Robert Rodriguez. Uh, I guess I just couldn't quite get into it as so much. Maybe if they would have trimmed down the runtime a little bit more as well, I think it would have been maybe a little bit more enjoyable for me. But overall, I still gave it three and a half stubs uh, on Machete Kills. Worth it, especially if you're a fun of the extreme over-the-top gore, over-the-top one-liners, and just a fan of Danny Trejo or the first film. I think you will enjoy it, though for me, I just didn't quite get into it as much as the first one. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, keep that ticket stop.